Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hut. And of course, uh, please subscribe to this channel and like this video and let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. So, I'm going to make the case for Edwin Diaz of the New York Mets to win uh, the Cy Young Award in the National League for 2022. I have here nine... Of the relievers from Major League Baseball that have won the Cy Young, both in the American League and the National League. And his numbers are either comparable or actually even better than some of the numbers we're talking about here. Um, now, if you like what I do here, again, uh, please subscribe. So here we go. The first up, the first guy up, is the first reliever to win the Cy Young, and that is Mike Marshall of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He won it in 1974. He's of note and of interest because he, I guess he still owns the record for most games pitched in a season for over 100 and, 104. Uh, obviously, the Dodgers that year went to the World Series. They played the uh, Oakland A's, but what was interesting about him is he's the first, and a bit of a revolutionary in terms of pitching style and and mechanics. So he is of note because he's the first to win the Cy Young as a reliever. And his numbers are just insane. Just And he's one of these old school guys. These old school relievers pitched a lot of innings. Uh, they weren't one inning guys. We'll get to the first one inning guy to, to really uh, win. And it's not who you may think it is. But uh, uh, so Marshall was a guy that would come in. Probably the seventh inning, the sixth inning, and basically finished the game out for the Dodgers uh, back in the day. So he was the first, the very first reliever. The second reliever was of the New York Yankees, Sparky Lyle, it was a classic lefty. Uh, that team too won the world, went to the World Series and won the World Series. So, so he was the second guy, another uh, classic reliever who would come in and pitch multiple innings. Late in the game. Uh, these first few guys they all pitched over 100 innings every season. So he was a guy that would come in. And he was the closer back in 77. And he was just... Um, and it's funny. A lot of these guys, these earlier guys, they didn't strike out a lot. So he didn't strike out a lot of batters, amazingly enough. So he's the second one. The third one. Uh, Hall of Famer. It's the first Hall of Famer that won it. And that's Bruce Suter. When he was with the Cubs. Now, what's interesting about Suter was uh, he didn't pitch a long time. But what made him a Hall of Famer and what made him difficult to, to hit, hit is he was the inventor of the split fingered fastball. And he had an amazing year with the Chicago Cubs, won the Cy Young, and uh, basically why he's a Hall of Famer is these years he didn't pitch a long time. In the majors, but every year that he pitched was just off the charts, off the rail, great. So he's one of these things. He's one of these players that um, he earned everything he got, and he went a long time to get to the Hall of Fame, but he finally got in. The next guy, another Hall of Famer, Raleigh Fingers, and he won it with the uh, Brewers in 1981, the strike short in 1981. Which is, it's funny. He he pitched all those years for the A's, but this is probably his best season. And uh, an ERA is a little over one. One of the great all-time relievers. And, and really, uh, he's another one of these guys uh, that was a multiple-inning eater. And he's also in several World Series, in five World Series during his career. Four with the A's. I think four with the A's. Three with the, uh, four, three with the A's and one with the, uh, the Brewers. The next guy up. Uh, also has, is of note, uh, another guy that's one of these old school guys is Willie Hernandez of the Detroit Tigers, the world championship Detroit, Ti Detroit Tigers. That year, not only did he win the Cy Young, but also the MVP. So he's the first to win both awards as a reliever. Amazing season for a guy that really was, he was a good reliever, but he had one big year. For a big team, this was a, one of the big teams of the 80s. 
That team got off to a 35-5 and start, and he was a big part of it, not only as a Cy Young Award winner, but also as an MVP. Next up, and we're starting to see now a change now with these relievers. Steve Bedrosian. He's one of these guys that uh, started as a starter and then became a reliever. And he's really uh, the first of these sort of one-inning guys. I'll get to the ul- the ultimate one-inning guy in a minute. But he was a guy that would come in um, and shut the door down the ninth inning. And um, he drew a lot of, he pitched a lot of games. He pitched a lot of innings. But he was more of a one-inning guy for the most part. Because he be- was converted after the next guy we're going to talk about. And who's the next guy we're going to talk about? Really, the real prototype, the real prototype uh, for the one inning reliever, and this one inning reliever uh, we'll get momentarily because I can't forget about the next guy that won the uh, the Cy Young in 1989, and that's Mark Davis of the San Diego Padres. He was a lefty. This is a guy that really, other than two years in the major leagues, uh, that were really outstanding. He was sort of like a serviceable left-hander. But in 1989, he had a big year for the Padres. And he was able to win the Cy Young. So, And he was a guy, obviously, that was a one-inning guy. A one-and-a-half-inning guy, certainly. And he was a guy that um, was very good for a long time. Well, not a long time, but a very short amount of time. Then, of course, we'll get to the big guy on this list. And that's Dennis Eckersley of the Oakland A's. The 1992 Oakland A's. This was, this was a team that had gone to the World Series several times. They went there in 88. They won there, went there in 89. They won in 89. They went there in 90. Um, they went to the playoffs several times. This year in 92, they went to the, went to the playoffs. Uh, what's interesting is he also won the MVP that year. You talk about a great year. His ERA was 1.2. 1.2. And... Uh, of note, as you know, if you follow baseball long enough, he was a, a reliever, a top reli- a top starter, excuse me, a top starter with the Boston Red Sox. And after the Red Sox, he sort of drifted around, was with the Cubs for a while, and uh, was not a very effective starter anymore. And he got traded to the A's, and A's converted him at the end of 1986, and he became a reliever, and really D reliever. Up until uh, Mariano Rivera took over. It's actually, Mariano Rivera never won the uh, Cy Young Award. But what was interesting about Eckersley, he didn't walk anybody. Uh, I think he walked 11 batters that year. Amazing. Amazing. And then finally, the last guy to win the Cy Young that was a reliever was Eric Gagne of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He is about as close of a comparison to Edwin Diaz as I could find on this list. Of the nine pitchers that have won the Cy Young as a reliever in the history of the Cy Young Award, uh, that year he went f- he saved fifty five games with essentially a one any pitcher. So he is really even more so than even Eckersley. He pitched amazingly well that year. Uh, he really only had three big years, and that's pretty much it for him. Um, now to get to Edwin Diaz. How different he is compared to all of them. Just going through the strikeout totals. Uh, Edwin has faced 172 batters this season. He has struck out 81 batters. He has struck out 47 of the batters that he has faced. Other than Gagne, nobody has come close to the level of dominance on the one pitch that he has thrown. That's that slider which he's thrown almost 50%. He's not given up a run since May, he's given up seven runs total for the season. His ERA is what one point two six, and forty five and a third innings. He's got the saves are actually quite, kind of low. If you go through his career, uh, his numbers are very similar to how he pitched in twenty eighteen. The only difference is the save total won't be nearly as high. In nineteen in uh, two thousand eighteen, his save total is fifty seven. Right now, it's twenty six. With about fifty something games left, he's not going to hit that. But everything else, his numbers are just incredible numbers. 
And really, this is my case for him to win the Cy Young. Because nobody's been this dominant. Uh, none of these other relievers have come close to touching him in terms of dominance when he's coming to the game. And his war, his wins above replacement, is basically the same as these guys. So it tells you something as well. Maybe one or two of them, are, are the, their war is a little bit higher than his. But they pitched more innings than he had. He has. He's pit, they pitched more games than he has pitched. I mean, some of these guys have pitched 80, 90, 100 games or 70 games. He's not going to come close to that. He's pitched 45 games. He may pitch another 15 games. But his war is, is comparable to theirs. So it tells you that if he's pitching more uh, in terms of innings and logging in innings and, and logging in games, his wins above replacement will probably be much harder than it actually is. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you later.